Microsoft AI, OpenAI's powerhouse partner, has just unveiled its game-changing plans for 2025. And trust me, they're nothing short of mind-blowing. Stick around as I break down all the exciting details. And don't forget to like and subscribe to AI Gridlock. Let's dive in. We have prototypes that we've been working on that have near infinite memory. And so it just doesn't forget, which is truly transformative. I mean, you talk about inflection points. Memory is clearly an inflection point because it means that it's worth you investing the time. Um, so it's that capability alone, which I expect to come online in 2025, is, is going to be truly transformative. If you didn't recognize him, that was Mustafa Suleiman, the head of Microsoft AI, a key player in shaping the future of artificial intelligence. Microsoft AI collaborates closely with OpenAI, and it's looking increasingly likely that we're on the verge of seeing an OpenAI model with something truly groundbreaking. Infinite groundbreaking. Here's why this is so exciting. Infinite memory stems from advancements in handling context windows, which are critical for processing longer and more complex texts. Even as someone deeply engaged with the AI space, I found this revelation fascinating. Google Research recently published a paper titled Leave No Context Behind, Efficient Infinite Context Transformers with Infinite Attention. This paper outlines a method to vastly extend the context length of language models while minimizing memory usage and performance slowdowns. The innovation comes from a clever shift in approach. Current AI models attempt to process all parts of a text simultaneously, which becomes increasingly difficult as the text grows longer. It's like trying to read a book while remembering every single word. It's overwhelming. The new method, called infinite attention, changes this by acting like a smart notepad. Instead of holding onto every detail, it summarizes the text on the fly, retaining only the most essential points. This allows the model to maintain a comprehensive understanding without being bogged down by unnecessary information. In essence, this technique blends short-term memory for immediate tasks with a long-term, summarized memory for retaining key ideas. It's efficient, effective, and poised to revolutionize how AI systems process and recall information. If this method or similar approaches rolls out globally next year, it could transform how we interact with AI, pushing the boundaries of what's possible. This is the kind of transformation that would elevate AI to an entirely new level. No longer just tools, these systems would become highly intelligent partners, capable of reasoning and evolving alongside us. Eric Schmidt has also weighed in on this, emphasizing the profound impact of long context windows. If we get there, this could be a defining moment in the evolution of AI. 2025 might just be the year when infinite memory becomes the cornerstone of AI advancements, paving the way for innovations we can barely imagine. It's hard not to be excited about what's coming. The context window is the prompt that you ask. So, you know, study John F. Kennedy or something. But in fact, that context window can have a million words. And this year, people are inventing a context window that is infinitely long. And this is very important because it means that you can take the answer from the system and feed it in and ask it another question. So I, I want a recipe. Let's say I want a recipe to make a drug or something. They say, what's the first step? And it says, buy these materials. So then you say, okay, I bought these materials. Now what's my next step? And then it says, buy a mixing pan. And then the next step is, how long do I mix it for? You see, it's a recipe. That's called chain of thought reasoning. And it generalizes really well. We should be able in five years, for example, to be able to produce a thousand step recipes to solve really important problems in science, in you know, medicine and material science, climate change. Here's another exciting clip featuring Mustafa Solomon, where he dives into why memory is poised to be one of the most transformative aspects of AI in the coming year. Let's hear it straight from the visionary himself and unpack why this innovation could change everything. We're going to nail memory. I mean, I'm, I'm really confident 2025 memory is done permanent memory. I mean, if you think about it, we already have memory yeah. on the web. Yes. We retrieve from the web, yep. you know, all the time, quite accurately now. Copilot has really good citations. It's up to date 15 minutes ago, knows what's happened in the news, on the web, and so on. 
So we're all, we're just kind of compressing that to do it for your personal knowledge graph, yeah. and then you can sort of add in your your own documents and your email and calendar and stuff like that. So memory is going to completely transform these experiences because you will be. It's sort of frustrating to like have a meaningful conversation or go on an interesting exploration around some creative idea and then come back three or four or five sessions later and it's like, let's start again. <laughs> We've completely forgotten what we <laughs> yes. talked about. Yes. You know, so I think that's going to be a big shift as well because you'll know not only does it lower the barrier to entry to you expressing a creative idea, but those things don't get forgotten too. So you can do this ambiguous cross-reference back to something that you wanted. What was that thing I said like three weeks ago? And that is, it's sort of like having a second brain in that. It's like an extension of your... As I dug deeper into what lies ahead for AI in 2025 and beyond, I uncovered two game-changing concepts that could redefine the tech landscape. The first, and perhaps the most mind-bending, is recursive self-improvement. Now, I'll admit, this idea is so bold... It almost sounds like science fiction. But, but when the head of Microsoft AI himself is talking about it, it's hard to dismiss entirely. So what is recursive self-improvement? Imagine an AI smart enough to improve its own design, then creating an even smarter AI that can do the same, and the cycle continues. It's like a feedback loop of intelligence, potentially leading to AI so advanced they surpass anything we've ever imagined. Here's the wild part. Experts believe this could start happening before 2030. If true, it means we're standing at the edge of an intelligence explosion, with AI evolving far faster than any human-led development ever could. Let's unpack what that could mean for the future. Recursive self-improvement. It could edit its own code in order to get better. Mm. Or it could self-improve. Or like it would have autonomy. It could act independently of your direct command, essentially. Or you give it a very general command, you know, and it goes off and does all sort of sub-actions that are super complicated, like, you know, maybe even invent a new product and create a website for it and then set up a dropship for it and then, you know, go and market it and take all the income and then do the accounts and so on. I mean, I think that's kind of plausible in, say, three to five years. Before 2030, I think we'll definitely have that and might well be much, much sooner. What really caught my attention was Mustafa Suleiman hinting that recursive self-improvement could happen much sooner than expected. While I remain skeptical, it's hard to imagine AI's accelerating development to such rapid levels. It's also impossible to ignore the blistering pace of AI advancements. Uh, case in point, OpenAI's One Series. This recent breakthrough is a clear signal that the AI landscape is heating up yet again. Looking ahead to 2025, the spotlight seems to be shifting toward AI agents. Uh, these agents are set to become the main theme of innovation. But here's the catch. Deploying agents effectively is a very tricky business. Unlike models that respond moment to moment, agents are designed to perform complex actions over extended periods. Their reliability becomes a significant challenge, and we're not quite there yet. I want to share a clip that breaks this down in detail. Um, let's explain it alongside a snippet from a research paper that sheds light on why building truly capable agents, uh, ones that can reliably execute tasks over long time frames, might still take a little longer. Let's dive in. It's still pretty hard to get these models to um, follow instructions with subtlety and nuance over extended periods of time. I think that they can do it you know, and there's a lot of cherry picked examples that are impressive, you know, on, on Twitter and stuff like that. But yeah. to really get it to consistently do it in novel environments is is pretty hard. And I think that it's going to be not one, but two orders of magnitude more computation of training the models. Um, so not GBT5, but more like GBT6 scale models. So I think we're talking about two years before we have systems that can really take action. When we dive into benchmarks for the frontier agent use interaction, specifically the tower benchmark, things start to get really intriguing and a little surprising. This benchmark is designed to evaluate how AI agents perform in real-world domains, focusing on tasks that require action and decision-making over time. But the results reveal some unexpected challenges. What caught my attention was the performance curve. It's it's not quite a reverse scaling law, but it's definitely a departure from the steady improvement we've come to expect in AI. The graph shows a 
surprisingly high error rate, which highlights how much room there is for growth in these systems. Let's break it down. On the left side of the chart, we see cutting edge models like CLAW 3.5, Sonnet, GPT 4.0, and various Mistral models. The benchmark tracks how often these models succeed on consecutive attempts. For the first attempt, models manage a respectable 46% success rate. But by the second attempt, this drops to 32%. By the third attempt, it's down to 26%, and the performance continues to degrade with each pass. This consistent decline tells a powerful story. While these models can perform well in one-off scenarios, their ability to maintain accuracy over multiple attempts is limited. It's a major hurdle for real-world applications, where tasks often require sustained reasoning and adaptability. This kind of inconsistency will need to be addressed before agents can reliably perform long-term, complex actions in dynamic environments. For now, these benchmarks serve as a reminder that, while we're making strides, there's still a long way to go before agents can truly operate autonomously and effectively in real-world settings. In practical terms, what this means is that if we want to deploy these AI models for production-level tasks, their performance must improve drastically. The current benchmarks indicate that for agents to be usable, we need success rates hovering around 90% or higher. That's a huge leap from where we are now, requiring at least a doubling or even tripling of current performance. Without this, users will face increasingly frustrating experiences as even advanced models like CLAW 3.5 Sonnet fail to deliver consistent reliability. This raises a critical question. How do we get there? Will it take a new foundation model, specifically designed for agents, or perhaps a completely novel training methodology? Whatever the path, the current trend, where performance degrades with every additional attempt, makes it clear that these systems aren't yet ready for real-world use. Reliability is non-negotiable. Dario Amade spoke about this just a few months ago, emphasizing that truly autonomous, reliable agents capable of handling complex real-world tasks are still a few years away. He predicts it may not be until 2026 that we see agents operating at the level required to function autonomously and consistently in dynamic environments. If you want an agent to act in the world, um, Usually that acting requires you to, you know, engage in a series of actions, right? You talk to a chatbot, it only answers, and maybe there's a little follow-up. But with agents, you might need to take a bunch of actions, see what happens in the world or with a human, and then take more actions. And so you need to do a long sequence of things. And for that long sequence of things to actually work, the error rate on each of the individual things has to be pretty low, right? If I'm a robot and I'm like, you know, okay, I'm gonna pick up this thing and walk over there, and then I'm gonna pick up that, you know, I'm building the house or something. There's probably thousands of actions that go into that. And so all of this is to say the models need to get more reliable because the individual steps need to have very low error rates. And I think part of that will come from scale. Um, like we need another generation or two of scale before the agents will really work. So what do you think about the possibilities of 2025 and the advent of infinite memory? Personally, I believe it's shaping up to be a real game changer from AI systems that can maintain context forever to the potential for true long-term relationships with technology, the implications are massive. Imagine the productivity boosts, the depth of personalized interactions, and the breakthroughs in knowledge processing we could achieve. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Do you think infinite memory will revolutionize AI? Or are there hurdles we're still underestimating? Let's discuss. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned to AI Gridlock for more exciting updates. Until next time.